y bar be the class average of section 2. And we've assumed that uh, the grades of uh, the, score, the exam scores of, of each student is independent. So you have different students in, in, in class in section 1 and section 2. So um, all the xi's considered in this for this are independent of the y's considered for this. So x bar and y bar are also independent. So now we've got both of them are independent. What do we know about each of these? Each of these from part B is normally distributed with mean 72 variance 1. Y bar is also normally distributed with mean 72 variance 1. Okay. So now, by part A, what is X bar minus Y bar distributed as? This is like taking A times X bar plus B times Y bar, where A is 1, B is negative 1. So what, what is... Uh, Part A tells us that x bar minus y bar, linear combination of x bar y bar, is also going to be normally distributed. The mean would be mean of this minus mean of that, so that just gives you zero. Variance of this, so one square variance of this plus one square variance of that, right? So the, the variance is add. So it has mean zero variance too. Because what we so what we basically proved was you have ax plus by, the means would be that, the variance would be I square then So here if I square one, I get one, square negative one, I get one, so variance two. question is, what's the probability that this difference, the difference in the class averages is greater than 3, and I can write this from the x bar minus y bar is greater than 3, or the probability that y bar minus x bar is greater than 3. y bar minus x bar is also normally distributed with mean 0 variance 2. So calculating the probability of normal distribution with mean zero variance uh, two, I'm doing the same for both, so let me just calculate it for one of them. <coughs> so how do you calculate this? I have this normal distribution, I subtract off its mean, which is zero, divide by its standard deviation, so square root of two. Twice probability that this becomes z greater than 3 over square root of 2. So this is twice 1 minus probability that z is less than equal to 3 over square root of 2 twice 1 minus 5 3 square root of 2. So read that off from a table. Just calculate what 3 over square root of 2 is using all the tables. Recognize this is the form of the moment generating function of a variable, and the lambda is a function. So then, if I ask you to calculate probability x greater than equal to 2, that's 1 minus probability x equals 0, probability x equals 1, so it's 1 minus when x is 0 is e to the negative 0.5, and e to the negative 0.5, 0.5 over 1 second.
That was part two of part B of uh, number six, right? The one you were erasing? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So in, in part two of 6B, it says all you basically need to know is x bar minus y bar is normally distributed with mean zero variance two. The three numbers are selected and independently in the zero one. Um, Select xi equal i number selected from a to zero one. Now it gets selected randomly from the to zero one. That means we assume that they are uniformly distributed over the to zero one. That's the meaning of just randomly uh, let them from that into one. Okay. Uh, And uh, I say that they're set independently, so I can say that xi's are independent. Now, some things to, uh, okay, so what's the next question? Uh, what was the question asking us? Find the probability that the sum of these xi's, I put 1 to 20, uh, xi, is at least 8, so it's greater than equal. So this is the question, right? Now, uh, I have sum of independent, identically distributed random variables, summing over a fairly large number, it's 20. And also, hint is, it says, find this probability approximately. Also, we don't know what the distribution of sum of independent uniform distribution, uniform distributed random variables are. So approximately, though, we can say that it's normally distributed. So that's what we're going to use, the central limit theorem. And for that, you need to know the mean. So remember, with the central limit theorem, this is what we're going to use. i equals 1 to n, xi, I would have to subtract n times mu divided by square root of n. So what do I need to know about this distribution? What is its mean mu? And what is its variance sigma squared? What is the mean of uniformly distributed random variables? Uh, it's 0 plus 1 divided by 2, so it's just 1 half. And the variance is 1 minus 0 squared divided by 12. So if you had uniform A, B, is a, the mean is A plus B divided by 2, the variance is B minus A squared divided by 12. Um, so then, once you figure out what the mean and variance are, you would, this is the you know, calculation you do, I subtract off the mean, which is 1 half, of no, n times the mean, so 20 times 1 half. <coughs> divided by square root of 20, standard deviation, square root of 1 over 12. Square root of equal to 8 minus <coughs> 20 over 10, so minus 10 over square root of 20 over 12. approximately, because by the central limit theorem, so what we're using here is the central limit theorem, this is approximately the probability that the standard normal is greater than equal to negative 2 over the square root, which is 4, 5, square root 5 over 3, 3. So this is the probability of 1 minus the probability z is negative 2 over Compute this as 1 minus 5 of negative uh, 2. Well, 
this would then give you 1 minus 5, that's the integral. So compute uh, 2 times uh, square root of 3 fifths, and then look at the normal tables for that. All right, uh, the last problem. The physical quantity is measured 15 times, and the average of these measurements is taken as a result. Each measurement has a random error uniformly distributed over negative 1, 1. What is the probability that our result refers from the actual value by less than 0. 0.5? So each time we take the measurement, So we're taking the average of the measurement. So every time we take a measurement, uh, supposing if the measurement was, uh, the ith measurement was yi, you had an actual value, whatever that value is, a, okay? Um, so yi minus a, let's call that your error. Okay, so sometimes uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, your error is at most uh, one above a or minus one or one below a. Okay, so, so somewhere between negative one and plus one. So l let me just denote by my errors by x. Oh, I just applied So if I take the average of these values, If I look at the difference of the average of the values from the actual value, um, um, I mean, that difference is just going to be the average uh, of, of the errors, right? So, um, so I can forget about the actual measurement. Let me just uh, take note of the, of the errors. So let xi equal error um, in the i measurement. And uh, our question now is, when I take the average, what's the prob probability that the error is, uh, is less than 0.25? I'm just looking at what's the probability that the average error is um, less than. So this is what my problem breaks down into. I'm looking at the probability that the average error is less than 0.25. All right, uh, what do I, what's my n in these cases? It's 50, so I can write this. Five, okay. What else do I know about, uh, maybe I can write this as a capital X bar. Um, what else do I know about my xi's? My xi's are uniformly distributed, and they're, going to, they're independent. Uniform over minus one plus one. So I will need to use. So I'm basically going to use the central limit theorem for this, okay? um, because I don't know the actual distribution, but approximately, since I'm summing up 50 iid random variables, it's approximately normal. So that's what I'm using here. Your x size is this. So what is the mean? Uh, zero. And um, the variance is. That would be 1 minus 1 square over 12. So that's 2 square over 12, so you get 1 third, right? So 1 minus negative 1, that's 2 square over 12. 12. So um, for the central limit theorem, the way we've written it is write it like this. This is approximately normally distributed. Standard has normal standard normal distribution. Um, but I mentioned last class if I divide both the numerator and denominator by n, 
and here's the symptom, but x bar, that's the better thing to, to look at. I get x bar minus mu over sigma over square root n. This, these two are the same. I just divide both numerator and denominator by n. So when I divide this by n, I get x bar here. When I divide this by n, I just get mu. When I divide this by n, I get sigma over square root of n. So now I know that this is also approximately standard normal. And that's what we can use here. normal, uh, well, so this is not yet normal. I mean, uh, summation xi O50 is not normal. Right, it's, it's, it's approximately normal. Uh, but the better way to write it is as uh, x bar minus mu over this is normal 0, 1. Oh, okay. Okay. So I normalize by this. Okay. And then I can always say normal 0, 1. But yeah, right now you can say it's approximately normal um, 0, um, sigma square over n, one third over 50. Uh, so, okay, so probability that x bar is less than 0.25, I can write this probability that x bar minus 0 over sigma over square root of n, less than 0.25, maybe let's write this, okay. minus zero over sigma is one over square root of three, right? Variance where is that? Over square root of n, square root of 50. This is prob and here now I can say this is approximately standard normal, less than 0.25, uh, one over This is probability, or this is just five point two five times square root of one fifty. So multiply point two five with square root of one fifty, we just standard normal tables and find the fact that is So once again, the first problem is definitely going to be on the joint distribution and just calculations. You calculate the mean, you calculate the uh, marginal distribution functions, uh, density functions, um, the expectation, the variance, the covariance, correlation coefficient. Or also, you, I can ask you about calculating certain probabilities. Okay. So probability of y greater than 2x, so probability of y less than x plus 2, or something like that. Um, so that's the first problem. It's always a question. Uh, so that's uh, the first problem. The second problem is going to be sums of independent time variables. Okay. So you have independent normal. Is it some of the same way? Uh, kind of similar. I mean, yeah, you have fewer problems than this. But uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 you, you'll have six problems. Yeah. So the first one is pretty much the same, and the first two are the same, so? Well, the first problem you can expect will be something about the distribution, the joint density function. Okay. Okay. So that, that is, the, anyway, the first main topic you have since the second midterm. Right. So anything involving that. Um, the second could be something about the sums of independent random variables. You just know, so either normal or Poisson, you know that the sums of independent normal or sums of independent Poisson are again Poisson, and you know how the, 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 value, the, the parameters change. The next thing, um, so yeah, so one problem could be joint density where you just calculate probabilities. The other could be joint density where you calculate things like covariance and stuff. So that's that, that, that the problem to be here. <coughs> then there's questions about independence. I give you a joint density, <coughs> you tell me whether it's independent or not. So definitely a problem like that. 
then there's going to be one problem on conditional probabilities and conditional expectations. The next set of problems would involve something like uh, the moment generating functions. So knowing some of the properties of moment generating functions that they uniquely identify distribution. So using so the problems like six and seven. Um, then it's all the central limit theorem. So you, yeah, so finally, you get the central limit theorem. Um, the central limit theorem is basically when you have large sums okay, or large averages, then you know that they're approximately non So what you need to do is from that sum, you subtract of n times mu divided by square root of n sigma, and then you can use a normal, standard normal table for that. And then, of course, the last problem would be like Chebyshev's inequality, Markov inequality. The seven problems? Yeah, six or seven problems. I, have, I can't remember how many that is. Is this listed eight? Yeah, I, I, here I've listed 11 problems. I think she has the final right there. Like you said, first problem. <laughs> grab it. Hurry. You grab it. I'll just grab it. I just grab it. Yeah, yeah, two you said would be put together. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like two is the yeah. end. Yeah. Yeah. I can see your reflection on the clock. Yeah, we will give you a method. That's it. Um, Sorry. Yeah, so I, I'm just giving you an idea of the kinds of problems. I mean, you may not have some of the problems that I, I'm talking about, but uh, you should be prepared to answer problems. First of all, joint density just to calculate probabilities. You definitely have a question on that. Something where you're given joint density, we talk about independence. Okay. Joint density, calculating different things like correlation, coefficient, et cetera. Um, so that's what joint density is. Then some properties of variance and covariance, that's like properties of sums of independent things, then moment generating functions. So some problems related to moment generating functions. Then central limit theorem. Definitely a problem on central limit theorem. And then Chebyshev's inequality is one problem on that. Yeah. All right, okay, good luck. Oh my gosh. All right, so Wednesday, time. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.